In 2008, the world was captivated with the bizarre behavior displayed by Casey Anthony. The then 22-year-old single mother from Orlando, Florida was revealed to have spun a web of lies to cover up for the disappearance of her two-year-old daughter, Kaylee, that summer. The Facebook photos of her partying around town and the dirt of emotion in interviews fueling the charges of first-degree murder before Kaylee's body was discovered later that year. However, there will be no closure for those outraged by a mother's neglect of her child, as Casey escaped conviction in 2011, but the questions of who killed her young daughter and why were never resolved. June 16, 2008, it is the last day that little two-year-old Kaylee Anthony is seen alive. One month later, July 15, her grandmother, Cindy Anthony, is frantic because she hasn't seen Kaylee. She calls 911 to report her missing. I found out my granddaughter has been taken. She has been missing for a month. Her, her mother finally admitted that she's been missing. We're talking about a three-year-old little girl. I need to find her. August 9, 2005. Kaylee Marie Anthony is born. Kaylee arrives after Casey's repeated denials to other family members about her pregnancy. Although she suggests possible partners, including then fiance, Jess Grant, and another young man who supposedly died in a car accident, the identity of Kaylee's father is never publicly revealed. June 16, 2008. Casey drives off with Kaylee. Kaylee was raised in the Orlando home of her grandparents, Cindy and George Anthony. But the day after an alleged family argument on Father's Day, June 15, Casey leaves with her young daughter and revolves efforts to reconcile in person. After learning that a family car used by Casey had been impounded, George retrieves the car and is overwhelmed by the smell that remains even after a bag of trash is removed from the trunk. Cindy tracks down her daughter later that day and over a string of 911 calls reports that Kaylee has been missing for a month, demands Casey arrest and notes the vehicle odor saying, it smells like there's having a dead body in the damn car. Casey is arrested and charged with child neglect, lying to investigators and interfering with the criminal investigation. July 22, 2008, Casey is declared a person of interest at the bond hearing. The hearing introduces evidence that a cut of her dog had zeroed in on the odor of human decomposition in the car trunk in the Anthony's backyard, as well as Cindy's admission that they had all seen Kaylee's after June 9. Although Casey is being held on relatively minor charges, the judge is disturbed enough by the evidence and the young mother's seemingly indifferent behavior to set bail at $500,000. August 20, 2008, Casey's bond is posted. California bounty hunter Leonard Padilla announces that he has paid the $500,000 with the hope that Casey will lead them to Kaylee. October 24, 2008, forensic reports from an examination of Casey's car are released. The reports note that a hair strand discovered in the trunk is microscopically similar to those found on Kaylee's brush and showed characteristics of apparent composition. Additionally, an air sample from the trunk is found to contain chemical compounds and consistent with human decomposition. December 11, 2008, the skeletal remains of a young girl are discovered. The bones are found in a bag in a wooded area less than a half mile from the Anthony's home by utility worker Ray Kronk. 
it is later revealed that Kronk had sought to convince police to search the area back in the summer. The Orange County Chief Medical Examiner reports that the bones showed no evidence of trauma and that Kaylee's death is being ruled as a homicide of undetermined means, although the skull is found with duct tape around the nose, mouth, and jaw. The advanced state of the composition ultimately prevents investigators from pinpointing an exact cause and date of death. May 27, 2011 A witness offers his theory about the smell in Casey's car. Simon Birch, the manager of the towing company that impounded Casey's car in June 2008, testifies that he had encountered multiple vehicles with dead bodies during his three decades in the business, and that the smell from Casey's car was consistent with those past experiences. The same day, the fiancé of Casey's brother also takes the stand and describes the very special bond she observed between Kaylee and her mother. June 6, 2011 A forensics expert takes the stand. Arpad Bass of the Oak Ridge National Laboratory explains how the shockingly high amount of chloroform, a chemical released by decomposition, as well as one that can be used to knock someone unconscious, detected in the car track led to his conclusion that a dead body was indeed present. However, his testimony is contradicted the following day by an FBI scientist who compares the chloroform level in the trunk to the amount found in the household cleaners. June 23, 2011 Cindy refutes previous testimony. In a crucial day for the defense, Cindy claims that she was the one who researched chloroform on her computer. She also testifies that a stain found in the trunk allegedly caused by Kaylee's decomposing body was there when the family purchased the car eight years earlier. July 3, 2011 The two sides present their closing arguments. Continuing with the narrative that Casey was only burdened by Kaylee, lead prosecutor Jeff Ashton emphasized to the jury how the young mother was motivated enough to go to extremes to achieve her freedom. Something needed to be sacrificed, that something was either the life she wanted or the light trust upon her. He says she chose to sacrifice her child. While forbidden from revisiting the unsupported molestation claims, Faze nevertheless delivers an effective closing argument by pointing out the lack of evidence that could definitely place Kaylee's body in the car truck or tie Casey to her daughter's death. After almost six weeks of testimony and 400 pieces of evidence presented in court, the jury of seven women and five men takes less than 11 hours to reach a verdict of not guilty. July 7, 2011 Casey is sentenced to time already served. Casey receives a four-year sentence and a $4,000 fine for the four counts of lying to police. But the prison time is cancelled out by the near three years already spent behind bars and credit for good behavior. July 17, 2011 Casey is released from jail. Casey exits the Orange County Jail shortly after midnight, passing the approximately 100 protesters who showed up to demand justice for Kaylee. It is my hope that Casey Anthony can receive the counseling and treatment she needs to move forward with the rest of her life, her lawyer says in a statement after her release from jail.